And first, I'm going to tell you why it's so special we have this guest, because Justice is on the docket in July yes. in over 159 counties in Georgia this last Sunday. Some of us gathered on the courthouse steps to pray, according to Second Chronicles 714. The Lord calls us to read his word, and we did that from the steps. And right now, we have with us Pastor John Miller, and he knows a little bit about revival in America, about listening to the Lord's calling on his life. So we welcome you, John Miller. And welcome. Thank welcome. Thank you Thanks for being here. Absolutely. Well, it's my privilege. Very inspired by uh, your heart and your calling to come to America to pray, though you were born in Argentina. Yes. And you're a pastor of a church there. You come to be a missionary in America, which is my heart's cry, so I'm very grateful for that. Yes. And you are calling for revival of his presence, which is so important in this hour. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. It's an uh, inheritance of the church that we have lost somehow in the baggage in the attic we have lost that precious treasure that's God's presence with us that's our inheritance I love the inheritance it is our yeah. birthright mm -hmm. and we need to fight for that but I love how you've had so many great experience from an early age but maybe you should just start by telling us yes. who you are so we can get to know you first I really didn't know who I was I know what I wanted to be Mm -hmm. Where do you want to be? <laughs> I wanted to be a businessman. I had so many wonderful plans for my life. All I wanted to do is everything <laughs> except be a preacher. <laughs> really? Look how God walks. Wow. <laughs> and above all things, not be a missionary. Of course not. Yeah, I'm a PK. <laughs> I'm a and good. any of you guys out there that are PK, <laughs> my condolences. I've been there. <laughs> and here you are. And here I am. <laughs> well, as a PK, preacher's kid, mm -hmm. and missionary's kid. I was born in Argentina, third world country. Don't tell an Argentine that okay. or we're in trouble. They think they're a first, you know, world country. But anyway. I better that way. <laughs> uh, we didn't have all the commodities here in the States and the beautiful things that God has blessed us with here. And so there's an element of suffering, of being different, and uh, but at the same time I was blessed to see revival from an early age see God's presence live in God's presence mm -hmm. I thought that was normal mm -hmm. me... until I found out it wasn't I thought praise worship just spending hours in God's presence the tears as our first mm -hmm. visitor said was so normal when did you find out it wasn't well I found out it wasn't when I got to the States when it came to America. When I came to America. I found out, hey, what we have there is different. Wow. And so <clears throat> I came to the States because my father said, I'm going to only ask one thing from you. And that is, I'm going to require you have one year in Bible school. And after that, you're free to do what you want to. And I thought, yippee. That box. I can do that. Yes, sir, I can do that. <laughs> okay, piece of cake. And so he left me here all alone I was 15 I hadn't turned 16 yet uh, I finished my high school and uh, so I had to work I worked at two jobs McDonald's like a lot of young people and my second job was two o'clock in the morning go to the public bus station and clean the restrooms oh not a fancy job not a fancy job or a good perfume place to be no and uh, I was just chugging through it, living uh, a life not very Christian, like probably a lot of people in Bible school mm -hmm. do. And I remember it was my birthday, 25th of July, 54 years ago, Wow! almost exactly. Full circle again. Yeah. Birthday coming up. I had a car and managed to raggle and buy for my grandma. In Pasadena and I was feeling sorry for myself full of smell of urine and public bathrooms cigarette in my pocket waiting for Bible school to finish I got back to my dorm something like six o'clock in the morning classes started at seven wow. and I parked turned off the key and the motor died and a voice talked to me just like our first visitor said it's real to me it was audible 
And that voice told me that, like Jeremiah, the first chapter, that he had chosen me from my mother's womb, mm. that he had called me, that I was, first of all, he told me I was going to succeed my father and uh, the penile work that he had started would be under my care and I would be the leader of the Argentine church. Then he told me that he would take me to nations and I'll be a prophet to the nations. Of course. Yeah. And you're 15 and what yeah. are you thinking? You're that was 16. Your I, 16. I mean, I mean was that 16, yeah. 16, 12 right. o'clock, you know, 1201. Right. Oh, hey, you know. Oh, God, hour. Hour. <laughs> yep. I'll okay. go for 16. Okay, so you're 16. <laughs> and uh, so I didn't know what to say. What am I going to say? What did you do? Did you Nothing. resist or did you? Nothing. Nothing. I said. He surrendered. Nope. <laughs> the white oh. flag. <laughs> Probably either got, get thee behind me, Satan, uh, or that can't be God. God doesn't right. speak to people that way. <laughs> but I was profoundly affected and uh, I went to school, classes. But I'll never forget, that was the beginning mm -hmm. of everything. Mm -hmm. I knew who I was. Mm -hmm. And I worked with young people for decades. And most of them don't know who they are. They try to be someone else mm -hmm. or copy. But God knows who you are, who you were born to be. I didn't know what I was born to be with all the rebellions, wanting to live my own life. And so he called me. And I continued in Bible school. In fact, I became, uh, real quickly became a youth leader of a church, a very well-known church in Eugene, Oregon. <clears throat> Pastor was Judson Cornwall. He was one of the leaders of praise at that time. And I became the youth leader and uh, I was baptized when I was 12, I think, because my father kept insisting every year, every baptism, are you going to be baptized? Are you going to be baptized? Okay, I'll be baptized. Mm -hmm. So I was baptized. So in that church, we had a baptism service, and Pastor Cornwall baptized several people in the white robes. And then when he finished baptized, last one, he said, uh, God's telling me if there's someone here uh -oh. that wants to be baptized, that feels you need to be baptized, just come on down, put one of these wet robes on, and that just, boom. Oh, God says, you did it for your dad, but you didn't do it because you wanted to. And man, it just, no, yes, no. no. What are the people going to say? I'm already, I'm the youth leader. I'm going to be baptized. They know I'm baptized. Mm -hmm. But I got up, went in the back, put the soggy, wet clothes up, and that was my baptism. That's great. And I surrendered my life to the Lord. That's great. Well, you know, we surrender a little bit at a time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't surrender all. <laughs> so my life continued a little bit. And uh, the next summer in the recess, 1968, my dad invited me to go back for vacation. You know, mm -hmm. and then come back to Bible school. I already decided I was going to continue in Bible school. And uh, so I went to Argentina. Well, I could tell you the rest of the story, too. <laughs> God had another plan for my life. Oh. I was by now 17 going on 18, 18 going on 19. And that was 1968, and something happened. God exploded in the Bible school. My dad had a Bible school there called Peniel. The reason it's called Peniel, the whole work is called Peniel. That's the place where Jacob, in his distress, met with God face to face. And he said, I met God face to face, and my life was changed. So he named the place Peniel. Oh. And so I can only explain that something extraordinary happened. God was there, 
and I only remember his holiness and I felt like Isaiah I wanted to get under the rug under the floor because I felt like the worst sinner in the world oh, wow. and I cried out for mercy I could actually feel as I was laying on the floor an angel with a sword in his hand and I knew that that sword was for me mm -hmm. that I was going to die because I was a sinner and I repented, I cried, I asked God, forgive me, forgive me. I, just like Isaiah cried out, I, I, I'm a wicked man, inside, outside. And that, that sealed it. That was it, that was the that day. That was it. That was the day I met with God face to face. But God calls anyone, but he knew the plans he had for you when you were born in your mother's womb. He did. Before, born, and yeah. before you were born in your mother's womb. And he called you from your home country to America and then to the nations. And there's several books out there. And, and you reach many nations. Here you, Asia, Spain. Yeah. What? Well, let me continue the rest yeah, of the I'm story. so sorry. It, yes, very yes, interesting. please, please. I had plans for my life. I was engaged to be married. Ah with a girl from Bible school. And after this encounter, God told me you have to break up with your fiance. I'd already talked to her parents. You have to send back her ring and stay here in Argentina. I cried. Oh my God. Men do cry. Oh yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. We learned that really? already today. <laughs> and so I said, God, how can you be so cruel? I love her. And Finally, I said, okay. I sent back the ring. I'm so sorry. Oh, my gosh. And I felt, you know, God is cruel. How can he take something away from you? I first hoped, like Abraham and Isaac, he, next day yeah, he'd yeah, say, yeah, you know, just okay, kidding. God, I tested no, you. Go it. back, be married, be happy, make your life. I just want to make sure I was first, you know. Yeah. But no. Really? My college dorm partner, we slept together in the dorm. He used to be her boyfriend. I stole her. Oh, uh, you that know. never goes well. Yeah. Yeah. It went well for me. Yeah, for a while. You know? <laughs> and he said, well, I want you to know that we're going to be married now in a couple of months. And uh, so I said, okay, at least, you know, everything worked out for well. She's getting married. Uh, she'll forget me now. And I got a letter six months later, seven months later. He said, John, uh, my wife is pregnant, I think five months. She went back to visit her parents in New York, and she had an accident. She died and was killed. Oh, my gosh. I said, God, I thought you were cruel. Mm. And yet, you saved me. Mm, look at that, he knew what From was being there. a widow, from going through the pain. Oh, wow. Being marked, you know, in the ministry. That wasn't your walk. Pastor, don't go away. I want you to hold that thought. I hate to do this, but in live TV, we've so got to go to I'll hold it. Because he's coming back. Oh, yes. we're not done you with get you. To finish, but what you a get to finish moment. the story, but we're going to just take a quick break for more music from Ismael Ramos, You Are My Hiding Place. Yeah. And we're going to return and we're going to hear the rest of that story. Don't Ooh. go away. Enjoy. You Are My Hiding Place. Pastor, you've got a few more minutes to wrap up the story that you just left us with hey. and tell us a few more inspirational um, tidbits from God that you know he wants us to know. Yes. Now what? Now what? So here yeah. I'm in a Bible school. God told me, now you're a Bible student again, but here in Argentina. And suddenly one day a young woman comes named Maria. Mm -hmm. And her heart was so open to God, so beautiful. I loved her heart. And she was a beautiful Italian actress looking also. Well, there you mm -hmm. go. God said, that's your wife that I have chosen. And uh, he is a good God after all. I love it. it. This, <laughs> last 24th, this last 24th of May, we celebrate our 50th wedding. 50 years. Congratulations. Congratulations. That's a jubilee year, you know. You have jubilee lots of year. blessings. Yeah, the most and beautiful I year. I love her life. nickname is Peachy, like her the Peach State. Her nickname is Peachy, like <laughs> the Peach State, yeah. But when you're trying to hold on to something so tight, God's trying to get you to open your fingers because he has something better, better. for his purposes. Better for you. And yeah. from there, the rest of my life has just been an adventure. Adventure. Right now, I heard last year on 8, 18, 8, 28, 18, what day was it? 8, 18? 8, 16, 
18, 18. my birthday of my wife. Ah, very good. And you opened a house of Ruth in Israel? In Israel. Last yeah, year? That's a miracle story. So that's many stories you have to today. share. The Lord has done miracle. amazing, amazing things with your life and used you for America, for Argentina, for the nations. But he's really touched your heart with love to show you that his presence is real and we can trust him and he's faithful. Mm -hmm. And so we cry out for people to reach for his presence in America too. Remind us one more time how we can reach you on Facebook maybe? Uh, Penile Atlanta. Okay. Uh, is Facebook. Penile Atlanta is our YouTube channel. Perfect. Wonderful. And well, I can't wait so to much. learn more. Thank you so much one for joining us. One last message. Mothers never give up. Amen. There you go. Never we agree. Give up. <laughs> Pray for your kids. And young yeah. people, God knows who you are. You're unique. Your DNA is unique in this world. There's no one like you, like your fingerprints, like your Thank high retina. Thank you Thank so you much so for joining us.